here. You get to just check out some incredible clothing, find some things you love, put them on your body and feel amazing. And that's what we want. We want you to be here, be able to express yourself, be able to find a way to let these clothes express you. And that's what you're gonna find with Savvy, right? It really is a chance for you to be embraced as you are, be accepted as you are, and express yourself. And you'll see girls wearing Savvy clothing many different ways, whether it's sporty or elegant or sexy or fun or hip or whatever it is. You can really take our clothing and, again, express yourself. And that's what we want. We want you to be you. We want you to be here. We want you to be comfortable. Like Chrissy said, you know, try in the clothing. Just make sure that you're you're, you're respectful because there's a lot of women here who are like, I want to try that on. So just res be respectful of that and then have fun, right? Have fun. If you have any questions about the brand, about the clothing, about anything, I'll be here. I'll be around. Uh, Michael's here as well. I'm going to introduce him in just a second. But this brand is designed to partner with you, right? So one of the things that we decided to do when we created Savvy was not only create phenomenal clothing, clothing that can take you throughout your whole day. So like I'm wearing a sports bra and leggings and I worked out this morning. And then after that, I threw this on top, tied it into a knot and threw my boots on. And then I headed into the office, right? So you're able to really navigate through your whole day with this clothing, right? And you're able to navigate through your whole day from being at the gym to going to the office or going on a date night or hanging with your girlfriends, whatever it is. So it's designed to be like that and all the pieces go together. So oftentimes someone's like, I don't know how to style something. With Savvy, you'll know how to style yourself, yeah. right? Because we help you with that and it's designed consciously for that. And that's a beautiful thing. So you guys are gonna have fun tonight, trying some cute outfits, have a blast and find what's gonna help take you through through your day. You know, we're not just about going through your day with ease and grace with your style, but also how you navigate life, which is about the partnership that I just spoke about. We decided to have this incredible clothing, and then instead of saying, great, let's put it in some stores, or let's build our own e-commerce website and use SEO and, and promote this product, we said, let's partner with some of the amazing women out there and give them an opportunity to share our clothing Give them an opportunity to earn free clothing. Give them an opportunity to be compensated should they choose. And give them an opportunity to create our community together with us. So this brand is a co-creation, right? It's a co-creation with our brand partners. It's a co-creation with our customers where we hear your feedback, right? Um, Michael, you're gonna leave him in a minute here, but he always hears the feedback and he listens. And uh, we're in, myself included, we hear the feedback from our brand partners and we listen when we create the technology and the tools for you. And we get to do this together. And everything's just more fun together. You know, um, Vienna, our amazing videographer, her and I were on a road trip and we traveled quite a bit. And uh, she was saying to me, what is the most fun thing that you like to do? And I answered her and I said, well, there's nothing really that is the most fun thing I like to do, it's who I'm with. I and mean, that's really it. I could be laying in the grass, looking at the clouds, or I could be snowboarding, or I could be skydiving, or I could be anything. It's who I'm with. And we believe that here. Community and family is one of our core values. So how you navigate your life, how you spend your days, it impacts you. It impacts your joy, it impacts your, your happiness, it impacts your life. So we decided let's do it together with a group of women that are going to back each other up, that are going to be real, that are going to be authentic, they're gonna show up as they are, and let's just do something big together, right? And we have all the resources to do something big. We have a fully funded company, we have an incredible design team, you'll get to meet Michael in a minute. We have marketing, geniuses, social media, videographers, event crew. I mean, the team we have is insane. And we get to take that team and travel around the world, bringing this brand out there by partnering with our brand partners, right? And working with our brand partners. So it's fun, it's creative, it's collaborative, and it's something that we get to do in unity. And we love that. You know, clothing doesn't judge you. Cl clothing doesn't care, our clothing doesn't care how old you are, the color of your skin, the size of your body, your age, none of those things matter. It's a common thread that unites us all. And we have some incredible clothing. So I'm gonna introduce Michael. He is our chief brand officer. He runs the clothing entire thing from a sketch to it being on your skin, the whole cycle, the inspiration for it. And that is our brand, right, is the clothing. Of course, we have the marketing and everything, but our brand is the clothing and how you get to express yourself with it. So Michael has over 30 years of experience in the apparel industry. He's worked with tons of companies. He's been CEO, he's been a consultant. I mean, the guy's done it all. He's owned his own factories. He's owned his own companies. He's, like I said, consulted. 
and he is a true genius and expert in the space of apparel and fashion. And not only did he come to Savvy, but he was able to build an incredible team that has a lot of experience that is bringing us really unique pieces that express who we all are as a brand here at Savvy. Now, Michael's been with us for a short amount of time here, and you'll see some clothing that's really cute. You'll see some clothing that you look at it, and you'll be like, wow, that's really savvy. And as time goes on, you're going to be able to really spot out savvy. You'll be able to walk into you know, a grocery store or a restaurant or whatever and see your girl and say, I love your savvy. Right? That's actually starting to happen already. Someone brought that up the last event, and someone actually stopped her and said, I love your savvy leggings. Right? And that's what we're going for, a brand that people can recognize and you guys get to be the ones to represent it. And we get to just empower you and give you the tools that you need to do that. So whether you wanna be a customer or a brand partner or you're just here for fun, we're glad you're here. And I'm gonna let you hear a little bit about from Michael so that you can learn about our clothing. And if you have any questions, he'll ask, but raise your hand and ask them so he can answer them about the clothing, about sustainability, about whatever questions you may have. Um, but we're really blessed to have this this gentleman who's not only talented, but one of my best friends in the entire universe. So get up here, Michael. <laughs> and he's super cool. He makes me more cool. <laughs> so I love Jen. Her husband's here. And he doesn't mind that I love Jen. <laughs> my wife doesn't mind that I love Jen. Um, Your so, daughter yeah. loves Jen, too. Yeah. And Vienna is my daughter, incredibly uh, talented. I, so I have, actually have had a love for, for, I guess it was fashion. I don't know, when I was really young, I sort of thought, hey, if I wear something and, and, I, and I wear it in a particular way, people notice that I'm, that I'm wearing something a little bit different. And you probably don't see many 55 year old guys that dress like me, but that's okay. I, I'm not worried about that so much. It says more about, how I feel about myself when I wear certain things. Every single person in this room is wearing something because of the way that it makes you feel and because you're trying to say something to someone else. And the interesting thing about that piece of fashion is kind of, Jen alluded to this a little bit, and this is the community that's being built around this brand. The community is actually more important than the brand itself. It's so important because your relationships, all of the relationships that you have in the world all become opportunities for you to present fashion to them. And if you can connect with a brand that, that can pay you, can support you in, in presenting that product to other people, how difficult is it to spot somebody that you know would look cute and savvy? Or in any kind of clothes, I guess you could say, hey, cute outfit, great sweater, that's an awesome jumpsuit. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter, it just makes it a really natural way to approach people and say, Hey, if you're, I actually really like your style and it's really cute, you might like this and introduce them to Savvy as a brand. Or for you, you might be approached by someone who says, hey, you look really cute, you would totally rock this brand. And the great part about that is that for somebody who's been, so I've been married for 35 years. Woo, 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 pretty awesome. I have five kids. Believe it or not, I have five grandbabies. And, um, What's really, yeah, I'm just laying it out there, baby. Um, but, the, but the cool thing about that, and the thing that I know because of those decades that I've been married, is that it's tough to reach outside yourself and make new friends, to make new relationships that are really super important. I'm still not, I'm, not, I'm talking about fashion, but I'm not talking about fashion. What I'm talking about is the relationships that can happen here. And what we're trying to do is build clothing that, that makes you so proud of what we're doing as a brand that you go, hey, my coolest friend is gonna dig this. The coolest people that I see are gonna like this brand and so I'm, I'm not afraid to introduce them to it because I know they're gonna like it. And, and that's something that I think as we work really hard to make sure that we've covered all of the bases, that we have an amount of product that's fresh and new and like nobody's ever seen it before, but we also have an amount of product that is easy to recognize and easy to wear and easy for you guys to show up and say, hey, nobody's gonna get offended by Nor Joggers. And nobody's gonna get offended by, you know, the Geos or the Indies or like the simplest versions of what we have. But then we have some fashion items we're gonna throw out there that really are kind of interesting. Behind the scenes in fashion, what happens is we take that into like this, it's kind of a pyramid of items where at the very tip of that, is, is really fashion forward stuff. 
at the top of that pyramid is this fashion forward kind of connection. It's like the stuff that you would really never wear. So you go into a brand new like, oh wow, that's really cool. However, <laughs> I'm not gonna wear that. And then right down the, the rung from that is, is a, something that might be more basic, but it's still fashion. So if I took a pair of leggings and I make them in a solid color, that's pretty basic. If I put them in a leopard print, that's a fashion basic. If I make them sequined, that's fashion, right? <laughs> so when you, when you kind of build that triangle, the reason it's a pyramid is because at the base of the pyramid, you have a lot. So we have a lot of basic items. You have a lot of items that everybody can buy. Everybody can relate to, anybody can relate to. They don't offend anyone. They're easy. And then we have that middle tier where we have items that like maybe feel a little bit basic in terms of silhouette, we can relate to them, but maybe they're in a print or maybe they're cut a certain way that makes them kind of a little bit different than just a basic. And then we'll always have fashion items. And in that process, it means no matter what happens, and this is what's shifting, and those of you who've been brand partners for a while, you will recognize this. What we've been doing over the last few months is we've been introducing small collections of product on Fashion Friday. Mm -hmm. So we're not just going like, oh, here's another bra, or here's another pair of leggings, or here's a sweater. We're actually showing you complete outfits, head to toe ideas. The second thing that we're doing is we're teaching by virtue of showing you how to wear colors that you may not wear together. We've had several brand partners show up and say, I don't wear green, but we've got them in green. <laughs> and they're going like, yeah, actually, I really like this and I'm gonna buy it. And that's interesting because sometimes we can be encouraged by that. You guys can encourage others and make them feel positive and confident to make decisions about what they wear that they may not have done otherwise. And so all of that's really fun. Just realize that as this brand evolves, we're going to be expanding. We won't, we're, we're gonna get there, and the, the, the process takes a while. It takes us about nine months to bring a brand new product that's on a sketchboard over there to, and actually have it in inventory ready for you guys to sell. Nine months, sometimes it takes a year from the time the concept is developed until the product can be sampled and developed into a garment that fits properly and made out of the right fabric and then lands in the warehouse for us to ship out to customers all the photography, all the videos, all the stuff that we do on the back end to prepare that. That's a long time. So in my mind, I'm not thinking about next month. I'm not thinking about next week. My mind is on next year. We're literally planning the balance of 2021 right now. We'll have our design meetings for fourth quarter. That's October, November, and or sorry, it actually encompasses November, December, and January. Um, we'll have those design meetings this next week. And so it might be a little bit weird that we're thinking that far in advance. And it's a little bit of the secret sauce of what fashion's all about. It's not really that secret. It's pretty interesting how it works, but the, um, but it's, it's also not difficult either. There's no magic involved. It's just some things become more predictable as you pace yourself. So if you're that much further ahead of where everybody else, if, if I designed something last year and I, and I have it now today, I'm, I've seen it. It's not super exciting to me anymore. But because I've seen that all that product as a group, I'm always thinking about what might happen after that. So when we wear certain things, we might go from like, hey, I wear, I wear super low-waisted jeans, <laughs> and those are not cool anymore, by the way. And then, I, and then all of a sudden, I wear really high-waisted jeans. And then I have a closet full of high-waisted jeans, and oh my gosh, my tops are all too long. So I start buying shorter tops, and then waistlines start to go down again. And, oh, oh no, I've got this, like, I, I've got all these short tops, I've got to buy long tops. It's interesting how that cycle happens, but it is predictable. So as we work out that far, both on color, silhouette development, on, on overall concepts for what might be happening in this particular environment, it's technical because fabrics are technical and fitness. And, and so there's new innovations in technology that are happening constantly um, for fabric to be made better, for it to be easier to care for, uh, for it to last longer, um, and then do really interesting things like you know, apply really cool prints in small quantities so that we can make really unique kind of looking items. So um, anybody have any questions about trending, about how we predict, about any of that design process where we look way out in the future? No, I, um, yeah. Are you, you have like a, are you trying to implement different age groups to help you 
navigate these trends. So like I have a Gen Z or daughter. Yeah. Super, super <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a great question. In case uh, somebody didn't hear her, she was saying, "Are we gonna uh, are we gonna go after other more age groups?" Um, and and there's a couple of there's a couple of answers that I have to that. One is, you know, yeah, I think that there's a way for us to reach a broader demographic, and there's a few ways that we can do that. And some of that has to do more with the fact that in this very room right now, there are different customer types. There are different taste levels, there's different styles, there are different people in the room, and this is just a small group. If we had 18, 20, 25,000 people in our savvy family, there's every kind of person out there that's kind of trying to reach our brand. And so, to a certain degree, rather than walking into a specialty, so the concept of a specialty store is a store that sells one kind of product, right? So, Lululemon, or like, I don't know, it, it, the, these, is a brand that just specifically focuses on fitness and a specific type of fitness too. You don't get to, you don't go into Lululemon and buy all the variety of fashion that you might want, and even within the fitness category. So what we kind of are looking to do is build Savvy as more of a department store, so that we're going to have different departments within that store. Where so if you're a sophisticated sort of minimalist kind of person, you'll have a place to go. If you're a bohemian and you want that kind of vibe, you'll have a place to go. If you're super sporty, and that's your athletic kind of vibe, that, that's, you'll have a place to go. Um, if you're kind of that outdoor adventure, free spirit person, you'll have a place to go. So we're building out that concept. One of the challenges, and Jen alluded to it, I think one of the interesting things about approaching clothing being sold online, which makes it really interesting, is that when we buy clothes online, we look at items. We look at individual items, you're like, oh, show me tops. And now I look at all the tops, and I look at that one top. When I'm in the department store, I walk up to a rack, and it's got four or five things on it. Sometimes there's a pant, and a sweater, and a short, and a skirt, and a dress, and all of them kind of coordinate together. Man, we, we want to figure out how to do that. Well, guess what? If we partner with all of you as, as people who are influencing others, and telling that story, you can reach those people because you can reach right into those individual items and you can present them in a way that's appealing to that particular customer group. So you can curate your own way of presenting the brand. And therefore, you can find, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of stuff here that, that would appeal to younger people and to older people. Mm -hmm. And there might be some ways that I would encourage them. Like, hey, look at this, look at the way this fits or look at how this covers. Look at how this doesn't cover. <laughs> you know? um, look at how like this may fit someone with a certain bus size, but it might not be right for someone with a different bus size. And those kinds of body differentials, totally fine. We 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 would need we need to embrace those in everyone. So, developing our clothing is really all about making sure that we're covering all, not only those taste level types but also the body types, also the performance elements of it, and then also just appealing across the board, like Jen said, from morning to night. So you'll see other product classifications that come along. Now a product classification is like leggings are a classification, and bras are a classification, and t-shirts are a classification. So as we expand, you won't just see things that you throw on over your yoga, you might see actual jackets, or you might see actual pants. And like some stuff that really kind of evolves the concept that stays true to who we are as a brand. Any other questions? So you said that you are planning for like nine months in advance, but that you also like are implementing new techniques and different fashion designs and things like that. So if something gets implemented say in July and other companies are already getting that out, but you've already planned nine months in advance, how do you incorporate that so you're also staying on top of new fashion? Okay, so that's a really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally geek out on you for a second, okay? <laughs> Stick with me here. There, there is this thing, there's this theory out there called, the, it's the law of diffusion of innovations. I know, it's really weird hearing a fashion designer say something like that. But the law of diffusion of innovations has to do with the fact that there are always first, first movers. There are always people who will adapt something new right when it happens. And then there are early adopters, which is sort of the second people on this curve. And, and the acceptance by early adopters 
are people who are like, they're not first movers, they're not the leading edge, they're not going out there and getting the latest thing. They're, they're maybe the next group that grabs it, but they're still way ahead of everybody else. The, the, the early adopters, that makes up about 15% of our population. The other 35% uh, of early majority, this is when it shows up at stores like Nordstrom, where like, hey, Nordstrom is pretty with it, but it's still a department store, they're still pretty slow. So it would show up at a store like that, or it would show up on your consciousness because all of a sudden you'd be like, hey, the coolest people I know are doing it this way now. Mm -hmm. Or the coolest people I know are now wearing, like, I don't know. Socks desert, with their leggings. Socks with their leggings, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Whatever the trend is, it tends to start with those people who are way out there in advance. And, and as it goes up that bell curve, then once it passes the top, the, bat, the last 50% of the people in the population are late adopters or laggards. And laggards are represented by people who only have a touchstone phone because they don't make dial phones anymore. I mean, these people are like, don't care what's going on. We don't talk to those people. They'll show up sometime in the future. We, we, don't, we don't worry about them. The, the, so if we're on the front end of that thing and we're saying, hey, listen, somebody's coming along. Like, you might see something that we've made, and maybe it is somewhere else. And, and that's okay, because maybe, maybe we actually appreciate their, their capability to design and lead the market. And there are some brands that are actually doing that. It's expensive. So most of the time, really expensive stuff is leading, and because they're, they're creating things. We have, we have a fabric that we really, really, really want to use for our fall collection, and it's brand new, and it's really beautiful. It's $7.55 a yard, now we typically pay up to four dollars a yard. Sorry, this is on our on our lifestyle stuff, not on our body wear. Our, our like fitness fabric costs sometimes nine dollars a yard, but on the activewear stuff or on the you know regular everyday stuff, seven fifty is a lot of money. All of a sudden, it means I need to sell the T-shirt for like eighty five bucks. Ooh. But if I went to James Purse, you wouldn't bat an eye at eighty five dollars. In fact, their basic T-shirt is ninety eight dollars. So. Maybe that doesn't fit at Savvy right now, but, but he's also pushing, James is pushing the envelope when it comes to developing new cut and sew styles, which are knit styles that he's making out of these really innovative fabrics. And, and we just, we have to wait for that. So yeah, they will have it. Some people will have it. There's also one more piece of that, and that is there are, there are gonna be brands out there that have volume that we don't have. And when you get to volume, you get to walk into a factory and say, hey, here's what I need. <laughs> and here's what I want, and here's the volume that I want, and everybody bows down to you, and you get stuff faster. Mm -hmm. The great thing is, is that that's still only the first 15% of the population that really gets access to that innovative product. The rest of the time, by the time it shows up in the, in the, in the early majority, we would, we would have it. So we, we don't usually lag that far behind that. We would see it coming for sure, just like we do with this Conti, but our ability to get it right now because of the cost, because it's so innovative and so new, it, it's gonna be tough for us to do that. But we're there. At least we're shopping in the right place and we know exactly what those things are. And when that price ticks down to five bucks a yard, we'll have it. And so will everybody else that's kind of in our space chasing that, that curve. Nice. Love it. Yeah. So, quick question. Do you think that the demographic people that will want to buy a product that's that luxurious, I guess? I mean, do you think, I mean, is that the trend that you think it will go with? No, you know, I think, the, the masses? yeah, well, I, I love the other question where, you know, whether it's young or whether it's, hey, look, I, I make enough money, I, I, I want to buy things that are nice. I don't want to, like, not buy things that are nice. So I don't want to go from buy, being comfortable paying $98 for a t-shirt at James Purse and then come here and your t-shirts are 48 to 58 that yeah. seems cheap to me. Yeah. And like, we don't want that either. And just like I said, we have a broad demographic in terms of taste levels, whether, you know, the bohemian and the sporty and the adventure and all that kind of stuff, that's one way. But there's also a demographic that goes up and down the price tier. Yeah. And until we're really in a position where we understand how many people have an acceptance or an understanding of that price tier, we probably won't venture too far into that. You'll see some items that come out that might feel a little expensive, they might, you might go like, wow, that's actually pretty crazy. Michael's chasing something here. But the reality is like, I wouldn't do that if it wasn't super cool. I wouldn't do that if I didn't see it actually being something interesting. Um, yeah, and I connect to that too. Like our model is not 
Like we have items from $45 up to $150, uh, $180, $200. So it, the, the, just like our sizes have a, there's a variety of different sizes. We have neutrals, we have neons, you know, we have prints, we have basics. So there is a way that, there, there is a common thread that can tie it all together. And as long as you have high quality, on trend, but yet still classic pieces, mm -hmm. like we will have that variety. So right now you can find something in our app that's $180 and you can also find something that's $40. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that variety because life asks for that. That's why we have an everyday line and we have Lux, yeah. right? So some of the pieces that, I'm, that I wear are Lux and some are everyday. When I'm hanging out and playing with my kids, I throw on my everyday pieces. You know, uh, when I come to the office or I'm going on a date night, I throw on my Lux pieces. So we, a brand can have both. Okay. And that's what we're about because our community is both. Yeah. You know, we have girls right now that are as young as 19 that are killing it in this business. And then we have women that are in their 70s that are doing this business, right? And they can all find something that they absolutely love. And I think that's important to us because we are about inclusivity, right? We're, we're, we are not like so linear that we're like, this is who we are. Like, you know, James Purse, Vince, some of these brands are very, it's a very linear market, right? We, we are a community first, and that community will be serviced by this brand, and we will have that variety. Yeah, great. Good. And I think what Jen said earlier, which is that we listen. We're trying to listen. I mean, yeah, the thing about the cycle, the thing about the what it takes to get a product to market means we listen, but it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> like we're gonna, It's not gonna come out next week. And for us to make sure that we're doing it right, all the other things that we need to do, whether it's finding the right materials or finding the right factory to work with so that we're making sure that we're using um, environmentally sensitive, mm -hmm. um, socially conscious uh, manufacturing partners. That's really important to us. So, um, anyone else? Can you speak a little bit more to your sustainability initiatives and how you choose the ethical sources of the materials that you use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, so this is an interesting this is an interesting topic for everybody right now because sustainability can have a couple of different things. Like you could, in fact, every single, every natural fiber that we use, whether it's cotton or bamboo or anything like that, we grow it, right? So you would think, well, I could just plant more cotton and grow more cotton. That doesn't necessarily make that environmentally conscious. It does make it sustainable because I can grow more but it doesn't make it sustainable or it doesn't make it environmentally conscious because of the way that cotton gets processed in some ways that it, it actually can affect the environment. The, the other, there's kind of, in, in my mind, there's three, there's three aspects to it. You know, the materials that we're using are made of, um, they're responsibly made of, of all kinds of fibers, whether it's polyester or it's nylon or it's cotton or it's bamboo or some kind of rayon. When you guys see modal or viscose or rayon or bamboo um, these are all forms of rayon and what that means is that they take the cell they take the cellulose from a plant and they bond it together with the man-made material to make it into um, a, a yarn and and that fibers made sometimes what's really great about that is that all of the fibers that they use to make rayon or modal or tencel or bamboo are super sustainable you can grow a bamboo forest in a snap. And so using bamboo is really great. Now, on the other hand, there's still a man-made element to that. There's still a polymer that holds it all together and makes the bamboo work. But then there's the properties of the bamboo that are really great. Now, let's talk about the social side of that. I've now gone into a community that has no revenue opportunity. And they can grow bamboo like nobody's business in their backyard. And so we provide an opportunity for them to sell their fiber um, into the into the textile trade, so we're actually helping the community by doing that kind of thing, by buying that material. The way that we find those guys, our second tier supply chain, what that second tier supply chain means is that at the front, I know my factory, I know their names, I know the owners, I know all those people, what I don't know is who are they using. And so when I delve into our second tier, we're looking for second tier prop partners in our business that are doing things like that that are treating people fairly, that are worrying about the energy usage in their environment, inside their factories, and then they're worried about like how, how healthy is our community in general. And then on top of that, we talk about 
whether it's sustainable or whether it's environmentally conscious to dye or finish or produce the fabrics that we're finishing. And so, um, you know, one, one good example is that most of our printed leggings, in fact, most of the ones that you can see here, we, we sublimate those instead of rotary print them. A printer, a big printer that uses water and it, and it prints fabric most of the time, is, um, uses a lot of water. And there's a lot of chemical discharge that goes into that printing process. We don't do any of that. There's absolutely no discharge in our printing process whatsoever. The only thing that's left over is paper. Um, and, and, that, it, it, and that's really awesome. It's actually kind of amazing that, we get, that we've gotten to that point in our society where technical outerwear can be produced without having to you know, mess with the environment. Then, uh, you know, on top of that, really, we're not working in countries that I, so I've been in this business for 35 years. I work with more than 50 brands. Um, name drop, just kidding. Name drop. Name drop. Okay. <laughs> well, I, yeah. It's pretty impressive, guys. So last, kind of I, I came here from Sundance Catalog, and at Sundance Catalog, my team was making product in 100 countries. And we were probably working in, and, and every single one of those vendors was acting in a responsible way. We actually have been in their building. We made sure that they were doing it. They signed contracts with us to the effect. We're doing the same thing here. So as we, as we really, like I, there isn't a country on, on this planet that I haven't made clothing in. That's kind of a weird one. A country that makes clothing, every single one of them I've made something in. That's pretty crazy. So knowing that that's the case and knowing how to work in each one of those countries, there are specific countries that we will not work in as savvy. Mainly because I think there are brands who are okay with not paying attention to the, the, either the environment or the social impact of being in those countries and we won't do that. Um, that was just a choice that we made. Yeah, it might make our stuff a little bit more expensive, but we're just not gonna do it. So, um, so I, I appreciate the question. It's a big... Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be talking on it more because I think as we go along, so one of the things that we're doing that I, I can't show to you because I tucked all my design stuff away, <laughs> but the mill that we're, we've, we've moved almost all of our fit product to a mill. So in the outdoor industry, the outdoor industry is actually leading the entire apparel business in sustainability and environmental concerns. They have something called Blue Sign. Blue Sign is like the highest standard for meeting these guidelines, right? There's not one fabric that we'll be buying from now on that doesn't meet Blue Sign standards. That's a pretty, that's pretty amazing. We're paying for it, we are, and, and no question, but they're the best fabrics in the world. There's not a better mill. Uh, to, what's that? Yeah, that's awesome, and I and I appreciate that because I think as we show up and say like, hey, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna skimp on the quality of the materials. We're gonna make sure that they're made in a way that's both sides. The fabric is made in according to Blue Sign, and then also um, the factories actually operate in a in a very socially Social conscious media. way. Yes. Wonderful. Anyone else questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening. So, thank you. Wish you all were here. <laughs> this is Angie. Yes. 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 Look at all this beautiful nest. I don't know how much Christy wants me to continue. There she is. Our wonderful leader. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay, since we're here. I think I'm, I don't know where I'm broadcasting this. 
It's Angie Nubi, by the way. Hi, y'all. Let me show you this wall, the things that we designed. <laughs> Where's your key? Look at that. I've got two phones here. Usually like five plus colors and then, oh, sorry. I'm already done, I'm going to pick the wrong. Excuse me, hello. It's okay, I'm just live in a group. Hi, there's Lisa. See my note. There's Sorry. You're so cute. <laughs> right, of course he wouldn't, but like I was just like, I'm like, I just met hey, Are we live? Hey. This one is live, I'm not sure where. Oh. But whose phone is it? Christy's. When you're done. <laughs> she had me. When you're done filming, I want to. I don't know when I'm supposed to stop. <laughs> Christy, I just, yeah, I have a lot of look, I'll show you guys right. here. Angie's going to take you and let you see all the things. These are where a bunch of people were. And there's Jen's desk. And there's Michael. There's other things. This is where they film Fashion Friday. Look, Jen looks so professional. It's amazing. Do you want to say goodbye? Yes. <laughs> goodbye. This was amazing, you guys. We had how many people? Oh my in gosh, and out? I don't even know. I want to say around 80. It was a lot. Probably, yeah. it's, it's been full. So you guys did amazing. I hope that we took care of all your people. So we'll bring you guys we'll do a spreadsheet and show you guys like who showed up and stuff like that. Okay. Bye. Bye.